Saints of God, welcome to Sabbath School Devotion. My name, Edwin Estime. A, a typical bilateral covenant follows this general format. If you do this, then I will do that. And so far, we have studied a few of them this week. Now, today, we're going to look at Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 10, which has five bilateral covenants within this passage. Now, before we begin, first, we're going to pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you have done for us, Lord. Now, Father, let us look into these promises and accept them as ours, Lord. In Jesus we pray. Amen. When we look at Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 10, we find a few bilateral covenants. And honestly, there are some real promises here. So let's go through these verses and dissect them to see exactly what God wants us to get out of them. Proverbs 3, verse 1 and 2. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Now, this promise has, has two aspects, right? You have an earthly and a heavenly aspect. For the earthly aspect, those who keep the commandments of God will most likely not find themselves in dangerous positions that could potentially end their lives early. Now, I am not saying that if you were to keep the commandments of God, you are pretty much guaranteed a long life. What I'm saying is that those who keep the commandments of God will most likely avoid dangerous behaviors, right? So for example, for those who believe that the body is the temple of God, will restrain from drugs um, such as alcohol and cigarettes, and the likelihood of these individuals dying from lung cancer or liver issues will decrease significantly. Now, when you look at the heavenly aspect, we'll definitely see the, the, the true meaning behind these verses. For those who keep the commandments of God, their lives will be long. I mean, they'll live forever. But moreover, because now that they're in the presence of God, they will enjoy heavenly and sanctifying peace. Proverbs 3, verses 3 and 4. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. You will find favor with God and man if you are honest, trustworthy, hardworking, kind-hearted, and full of love and compassion. I mean, think about a person that you believe have a beautiful personality. Now, what makes you have this opinion of that person? I mean, is it probably because that person is, is loyal? I mean, they tend to be non-judgmental, always caring, always sharing. They never seem to have a frown on their face. They seem to know exactly what to say um, to cheer up people when they are down. So not only will you attract the friendship of others when you are steadfast in love and faithfulness, but these attributes will also please God. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Suppose uh, we want a perfect direction in our life, right? In that case, whether we are buying a house, looking for a spouse, um, selecting a, prof a profession or planning a vacation, in all our ways, we should acknowledge the Lord. We will clear, he will clear our, our roots from obstacles in addition to directing us in the right direction. When making day-to-day -day plans, the Apostle James advises us to seek the Lord's will. James 4, verse 13 through 15. This does not imply that we will be provided with the answers of all of our questions. And this is the reason why we need to trust the Lord with all of our hearts. Human understanding is always open to error. What looks like the right choice could actually be the wrong one. But the Lord sees the whole picture and always knows what is best for us. Here, it's essential to, to avoid being irrational and naive. Instead, 
we must accept our own limits. Let Jesus take the wheel of our life and he will steer us in the right direction. Proverbs 3, verse 7 and 8. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Solomon is telling us that we need to fear the Lord. But what does he mean by this statement? Thank goodness he answers this question in the first chapter of Proverbs verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So what Solomon is saying here is not to be wise in yourself or search for wisdom within yourself, but in God. When you search for knowledge and wisdom in God, you fear the Lord. When you seek ye first the kingdom of God, God will bless you with a sense of joy that cannot be quenched by the darkness of this world. He will feed your spirit and now you will feel alive again. Proverbs 3 verses 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with your first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with vine. God promised to supply the needs of all of his children who honor him and their wealth and first fruits. The children of Israel will give God the first fruits of their harvest. By doing this, they trusted that God would supply the rest of the harvest. In this modern age, the Bible asks us to give God the first portion of our paychecks. And when you get your paychecks, I mean, don't pay your mortgage first. I mean, don't put money into your savings account first. You first give God his portion, his 10%. By doing this, God promised that your needs will always be supplied. Now, this doesn't mean that he will make you rich beyond your beliefs, but you will always have a roof over your head and had something to eat. Brothers and sisters, just like we saw yesterday with Moses and now today with Solomon, they are both uh, trying to portray a God who wants to bless us. They illustrate God who only wants to shower us with everything good that he can offer. But to receive those blessings, we have to be willing to follow his commandments. I ask of you today, seek God, make him your priority, make him the, the treasure of your life, and he will never leave you wanting. Saints of God, keep the faith.